All right, gang, we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Today we're working on some concrete work, and so uh, I'm doing a little bit of experimentation in building my concrete monitors. So first, let me show you what we've got. We've got a few different kinds of stuff to make glass fiber reinforced concrete. So we've got some Silk, Silpro TDQ, um, which is designed to be you know, uh, applied very thinly. I've also got some VD, VOH, or for vertical overhead. So this stuff is already polymer modified and has fiber reinforcement. Um, then I've also got Portland cement and some mortar stucco mix as well as some sand there so I can kind of make my own recipe of GFRC. Um, also gonna be trying out using some of this uh, flow control stuff here to help liquefy it. I'll show you why in a second. And then I've got some anti-crack AR glass fibers. Um, Concrete bonding adhesive and acrylic fortifier. I couldn't find any just straight ahead acrylic fortifier So we're gonna give this a shot and see if this helps uh, Strengthen the concrete or make it more sprayable because I don't have to use as much water So that'll help it be stronger, but I can have more liquid in there Because of the acrylic um, and also just some odds and ends for like mixing stuff up and then I've got some tools over here that I'm going to be using. So I've just got some pans to spray stuff into that I got from the dollar store. I'm actually going to try using these little jewelry organizers that I got from the dollar store as well first. And maybe some just some El Cheapo cardboard boxes as well. I just want to try that out and see what's going to make a useful mold. Right now, we're just uh, experimenting. So I've got this guy right here, which is a spray gun. And I'm going to see if I can spray into those molds and then uh, go back and hand pack in uh, some GFRC backing mix so that they can go into these molds, which are about um, maybe an inch, inch and a half deep, something like that. The idea is it's gonna kind of replicate what it's like to build a speaker by uh, spraying in. So hopefully by spraying, I'm gonna get a lot less air in there, uh, a lot of those, a lot less pinholes that I had in the uh, original concrete monitors where I was trying to do a pour in mold. So hopefully spray it in, do some GFRC. It's gonna be really strong, reasonably light as well. So, and then I've got my, my handy dandy egg beater mixer. So we're gonna give that a shot. Um, you may also notice I've got uh, got my, rest, um, my dust mask on. Concrete dust is no joke. It's got lots of silica in it, which is terribly bad for you. So I'm gonna try not to breathe too much of that in. So I'm gonna set this up and we're gonna give this a shot. I got a few different mixes that I wanna try. Um, we're going to try spraying them in. We'll see how it works. Well, it looks like my Harbor Freight sprayer doohickey that I got has kind of a weird design flaw, maybe. Um, it does actually seem to work. I thought it maybe needed some new O-rings, so I swapped out the O-rings. But uh, here, check it out. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to connect it to the air. So unless I disconnect it from the air, there's always air flowing through the little brass tube in the middle. It does seem to stop and start when I press the trigger, but I mean, I don't know what's what's up with that design. That's Is that how that's supposed to work? Does anybody out there know? Anyway, uh, seems to actually function as long as I disconnect it from the air when I'm not using it. So we're going to give that a shot. Uh, I'm going to mix up a couple little batches of concrete and we're going to give this a go. All right, so here's just a quick high speed time lapse, mixing up different types of concrete and uh, spraying them onto some different panels and spraying them into a couple of the little cups and uh, just trying it out, just seeing what actually would work. So I tried the VOH, uh, the TDQ, and mixing up some Portland cement as well and putting them in the sprayer and just testing things out just to see what would actually work. Uh, to do the testing, I did use an egg beater and some solo cups, and here's the result. So we see a few different kinds of material, uh, how, which I poured or packed in by hand and sprayed, and I also was testing out the different dyes. Uh, so you can see here what the dye looks like on each of the different substrates. In the end, I ended up going with the uh, VOH, vertical overhead, because it I think did the best job of not slumping and uh, here's what it looked like there. So the next step was to build the mold 
In this case, it's just a box uh, made out of three quarter inch melamine particle board, and you just make it like you make any kind of box, really, uh, except, of course, it's only got the four sides. So here you can see I'm just assembling the side. You're just using a uh, corner jig to try to keep everything square. Uh, I will say it worked pretty well, but it probably could have been a little better. I'm just screwing the box together just to make it so that it will be easy to assemble and disassemble. And checking for square. All right, so here are our molds. They are some three quarter inch melamine particle board and just some oak dowels that I covered with paste wax. Uh, I've sealed up all the gaps here and they're just screwed together so that I can take it apart pretty easily. So I've got two of them so I can do both. Um, and then I'm also gonna be making some little lamp things. We're just gonna try that out. Uh, to do this, I'm going to use this guy right here, which is my Harbor Freight texture sprayer. I've tweaked it a little bit so that it actually sprays a little bit better. I've got a uh, ball valve on there so that I can control the airflow a little bit more. And uh, we're gonna try spraying in some concrete. So the next step is we gotta mix up a little bit of cement to spray in. Okay, so for this project, uh, to start off with the spray, I'm just gonna use my little egg beater contraption here um, and just a little bucket to mix everything up in. And then I'm gonna put it into the hopper here and hopefully be able to spray it on the, the walls, floor, and ceiling of the molds here. Uh, what I'm gonna be using is Silpro's TDQ, uh, Thin Deep Quick Repair. So this stuff sets really, really quickly which makes it great for this kind of project where we're gonna be packing it in vertically. So uh, let's see, let's get this party started. So the next step was to mix up some of the cement and load it into the hopper of the spray gun, which I'm doing here in fast motion because it's boring and then uh, starting to do some spraying. bit thick for what I'm trying to do but we're gonna go for it wish me luck so here's here's a few seconds of me spraying into the corners of the box so you can get an idea for what this looks like it's uh, not easy to get the spray evenly across all the surfaces so here you can see again spraying some more into the corners trying to get that uh, VOH as far into the, the cabinet as I possibly can. Alright, so that's it for the spraying. Now we're going to let this set up for five to ten minutes and then we're going to mix up some more uh, for hand packing with the uh, fibers in there so how exciting okay the spraying is set for a few minutes now so we're gonna come back and uh, pack it in with uh, some hand pack using our fibers so when we talk about fibers we have AR or alkali resistant fiberglass that's this stuff right here uh, it's about three quarter inches long bits of chopped up fiberglass. Uh, hence, again, the need for personal protective equipment here. So I'm going to go ahead and start mixing up my TDQ, and then I'm going to mix in some of this. Uh, this time we are going to use some acrylic, so it'll bond to that face coat. So for acrylic, uh, I don't have anything terribly fancy. Just got the uh, Sika Pro, which is... Uh, latex and acrylic fortifier so we'll give that a shot pack it all in there and we'll see how we do so get mixing let's see if we can get this here We're going to put in a little bit more liquid here. We're going to put in a little bit more liquid and see how that goes. 
this is pretty close to what we want. But I want to be able to mix. All right, I think it's time to pack. Now let's give it a go. It's looking pretty nice and thick here, so we'll see what we can do. There we go. This look nice and thick. Lots of fiber mixed in there. So let's pack it in, see how we do. Well, God knows if that's worked at all. That was really difficult. Yeah, it was very difficult to get it even. The, uh, you can see up here, I flipped the box upside down to get the top part. And the uh, where I've done the bottom already, is already started to set, you can see. And in here as well. So it's really, really tough to get it even. And then I ran out, of course. Guys, that's how things go. So, I am gonna finish up my little lamp things as well. So we'll go ahead and do those with just some uh, uh, dark gray Portland cement and some uh, some sand. This stuff in the bucket would had already set by the time I got to the bottom. Woo, this stuff sets fast. Now we wait. There, there were a few thin bits, so I went back over them with some of the Portland cement mixture. So hopefully that's enough to keep everything together there. Let's see, there was a couple of thin spots there. And there's my lamps, so we'll see how they do. The Portland cement does not slump quite as little as the uh, TDQ does. So TDDQ. TDQ has really low slumps, so hopefully there was enough in there. If not, I'll have to go get another bag and do it again. Okay, let's see if we can get the top off of the sucker. See how it looks. A little nervous. Look at that. It's so nice and smooth. Wow, I am really impressed with how that came out. This one was not so good. I think this was what it originally was the top. So the spray kind of dripped down and just didn't stick anywhere near as well. Okay, so the top didn't fare quite so well. So the spray kind of stalactited down when I sprayed it in there. It just didn't adhere anywhere near as well as the bottom did. So it's really flaky. But I think it's fixable. Look, you can see how it kind of dripped. Mixed results. We did get some really nice smooth adhesion here. It released beautifully. And so that is exactly the kind of edge I'm looking for. Unfortunately, some of these places, the, uh, the backing coat didn't adhere to the face coat very well. And then in other places, the face coat stuck to the, uh, the wood forms a lot better than it stuck to the backing coat. So, not sure how to rectify that. Um, I may, may have to do it again. I'll have to try it and see. But, what I've ended up with is actually a relatively lightweight, fairly inert, kind of box um, and it seems pretty strong let's try it out shall we let's see what happens when I stand on it yep I can stand on it oh no I can't oh well <laughs> 